graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Okay, 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 okay. They fuck you at the drive-thru, okay? They fuck you at the drive-thru. They know you're going to be miles away before you find out you got fucked, okay? They know you're not going to turn around and go back. So they don't care. Who gets fucked? Oh, Leo gets. Okay, sure. I don't give a fuck. I'm not eating this tuna, okay? They fuck you in the hospital. First they drug you, then they fuck you. And when they're done fucking you, along comes the insurance company and fucks you some more. Never that you know what they're doing, kid. That's, they fuck you with cell phones. That's what it is. They're fucking you with the cell phone. They love when you get cut off. You know why? Huh? You know why? Because when you call back, which they know you're going to do, they charge you for that fucking first minute again at that high rate. They fuck you, they fuck you, they fuck you with the cell phone. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Now, here's Chris. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul, and we are we're recording this at like one thirty in the morning. I <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Let's be specific. One thirty. Well, according to my clock, it's one thirty-two, but it's probably like two minutes fast. So yeah, I have slept all day long. I'm actually coming off a. I don't want to say. Hopefully, I'm coming off. My throat has been killing me for the past couple of days, and like. Our last episode I released kind of late only because I was just I was just under the weather. I think it's just because my new job and I deal with people all day and, and just the fact that, you know, it's that time of year where everyone's getting sick. So, like, I'm not sick per se, but the back of my throat is killing me. You know, no blowjob jokes. Thank you. And then... Uh, <laughs> Who, me? No. <laughs> no, I would never do that. And, like, I literally passed out. Like, I had to, I had to run some errands this afternoon or whatever and... and like I got home and like I literally probably slept from about five thirty till about till about eleven. And I really the only reason I woke up is because you texted me. <laughs> so um, Oh well, I'm I'm glad that I could wake you up, darling. You woke me up, goddammit. So yeah. Um I guess I'm feeling a little better now. I've had I've had chicken soup and I've had uh, <laughs> fruit cocktail out of the can. Oh god. Straight out of the can. Oh my god, fruit cocktail. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Christ. That's one of those things where, like, I see it in the supermarket and I I buy it and then it just ends up sitting in my cabinet for, like, months and then, like, days like today are like, oh, I need to be hydrated. So let me eat some fruit cocktail. So it came in handy. Oh, God. <laughs> Does it feel good in your mouth? I'm sorry. I had to say. <laughs> And uh, so I'm also I'm also nursing I'm nursing the back of my throat because I'm just drinking uh, powdered iced tea just to kind of make my throat a little better. And I haven't had a cigarette in like over a week. Like that was like the last the last day I had a cigarette was the last. So I'm not like a smoker. I smoke, but I'm not a smoker. You know, I'm not one of those people. I don't smoke a pack a day, or you know, I'm I'm not a train smoker. Um, so I just like with the like the last day I had a cigarette, and it's like don't get me wrong. When I get out of work, I'm kind of like stressed, and I get in my car and I want a cigarette, but then. And with the back of my throat hurting, I'm like, mm, I don't want to want a cigarette because it's going to make things worse. Yeah, so, I don't know what it is, but hopefully, but I am feeling better now. I mean, it hurts a little bit. It hurts when I <laughs> it hurts when I swallow. But uh, <laughs> oh god, this is too you're many fucking. A, I'm just you're making this too, many too fucking easy open. for me. You're making this too easy for me, and I, and I can tell you right now, if Terrell were here, you'd, you'd be so fucked right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah. So like I said, I slept all day, so I guess I'm energetic now. I mean, we were just uh basically we we're going over. Uh, 2s1p.com. The website is technically up. I'm not exactly happy with it, but it's uh, basically that's what I get for you know choosing the cheap package and you know basically you know seeing if I can. But that's how these sites. That's how they get yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? They give you the mm-hmm. cheap sites and 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 they give you these limited fucking tools and they purposely want you to fumble and they want you to be. Uh, lost so then you can pay them to you know uh, you can pay them to help them help you get your site up and running and as much as I love this website I mean as much as I love this podcast and it's been part of my life for the past year and a half you know it's like you know I just want to I just want something you know now if you know if I was making money then I could put money into the site but as of right now it's like you know, I'm doing it. I'm doing it all by myself, and it's just I'm lost right now. It's like you know they 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 do it on purpose. That's how they fuck it. That's how they fuck you. <laughs> um, no pun intended. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but that's um Joe Pesci. I'm trying to remember what movie that was in. But he's like, that's how they fuck you. That's how they. Fuck you. And as it is, I that's mean, how they fuck you. I mean, it, it's uh, it's just like you know these you have to when you do a website you have to find a host you have to find uh you have to find a system that you're going to use and most people use wordpress like we've been talking about and like you know if you don't use something like wordpress most of the time these sites turn out to be like complete and utter crap especially in our day and age you know with you know hd screens and blah 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 this and that you know so 
it's kind of hard to people some people don't understand like it's really hard to just go out there and be like okay i'm gonna make a website you know first of all if you don't have a discount code it's not cheap mm. uh second of all if you don't have somebody that can design a website not cheap <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna get a geo sites back up you know <laughs> Oh, that's a, dude, I, you read my mind. I was about to say that. I was like, it's not like we have fucking GeoCities anymore. I mean, oh, yeah, oh man. <laughs> that shit used to be like, I, dude, I had I had like a Dragon Ball Z site up and shit, like with all these pictures and that, man. I was so pissed when they tore all that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> or like the cheap, like the early, early like versions of like GIFs or like, you know, flames. and. I, I'm trying to think fights. of what the, what the, the new thing that's, I, I can't, it's, I think it's WebRoot. I've read about it, but I'm not super duper familiar with it. I don't remember what it what it is, but uh, no, it's Weebly. Weebly, that's what it is. Weebly.com. That's the new like geo cities out there, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just really simple on these sites, but at the same time, it's a free site. Yeah. So that's how they fuck you. <laughs> that's how they fucking. That's gonna be running gag this show, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. But okay. you know what it is like? Okay, my my new job, and once again, I'm not gonna name my employer, but you know, I have people that um basically come in. And you know they all they see is the big giant writing that says you know something's on a discount or something is uh, oh, yeah. you know buy one get one free or whatever the case may be and you know and these people don't understand it's like well you know I want I want what the, what you know and then you realize no you have to look at fine print and realize you know and then these people like they get they they have the audacity to get like pissed off like what do you mean I can't do this and it's like you know what do you think we were just giving shit away for free you know it's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how they fuck you. It really is. I mean, you have to be, you have to be uh, a little skeptical. You know, I'm saying when you see this wonderful deal, you know, and like, and like I noticed, like right now, this time of year, I mean, we're we're, we're right around the corner from Halloween, which basically means Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Yeah, and like you see these stores, like you know, uh, you know the big, you know, coming up soon, Black Friday, and they make these, you know, big deals, and so they'll say, oh, uh, come in, and it's always like, you know, uh, you know, get an iPad two for fifty bucks or whatever, you know, some ridiculous thing like that, and they go, yeah, yeah, technically the company, you know, that owns all these stores, yeah, they'll send one fucking iPad two to every store that'll be the fifty dollar iPad two, you know, and I'm just using that as an example of something that people want, right, you know, and. And technically, yeah, they can put in an ad, come to the store and get an iPad 2 for 50 bucks. And if people come in and it's like, they don't realize that, okay, one lucky customer is going to get that fucking iPad 2 and the rest the rest of you suckers are fucked. You well, know what I'm saying? It was just a reason to get you in the door. Well, like, um, and I guess we're actually doing some geeky things for once. <laughs> um, like, basically what they do, like, for example, at Best Buy, they will do, um, there's people, and I'm sure you guys have seen them on the news all the time. Um, basically what happens is, is these guys, they, they will camp out starting, I think it, probably Wednesday night, mm-hmm. if not Thursday morning, they'll camp out right at the front door and you know, the, the line will start going around the block or whatever. Mm-hmm. And what these guys will do is before they open the doors, like at Best Buy, for example, before they open the doors, they'll go up, they'll go, they'll, they'll go to the line and they'll start with the person in the front of the line and say, what are you here for? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm here for Let's say it's a 50-inch uh, flat-screen TV, and it's on sale for $200. Mm-hmm. Okay, because they do those kinds of things. Yeah, they give them a ticket. That way, when they walk right in, they give them the ticket. They get the thing. They go up to the register. Boom, all set. Nice, orderly, and done. So by the time they get through the line, pretty much everything, if not halfway through the line, you know, is already gone. Yeah, let's face it. We're, we're, let's not be stupid about this. The same thing happens at Target. Um, I'm not sure about Walmart. I, I know, I think I've heard them do it at Target. I haven't heard them do it at Walmart, but I'm sure that they probably do that at Walmart. And it's, and I've, I've worked at, I've worked at, uh, Radio Shack, not this past Black Friday, but two, for the two Black Fridays before that. And that's how we did it. We had a line because the, like I said, not last Black Friday, the one before that, the big thing was the Dre Beats. Now, when they first came out, and I think there still are, you know, they were like $180 or something like that. So we, at the time, had them, you know, at the at the break price of one hundred and thirty dollars, <laughs> still paying one hundred thirty dollars right. for fucking headphones, and you know, so we you know we had people, and obviously that Black Friday, two Black Fridays ago, people were stoked about it. They were all excited, and that's what that exact that you what you just explained exactly what we did. We we had to come in. We were at the store at fucking three o'clock in the morning, getting set up, you know, and then we opened at five, uh, and we went to the first couple of people in line because there were people waiting for the Dre beats, and you know we saw you know we basically. You know, because we basically had it ready. You know, with us, we the, the people didn't get a ticket, but because we didn't, it's not like we didn't have a line around 
corner when we, you know, by the time we opened, we probably had like 20 people online. So that's exactly what we did. We had everything, basically we had it lined up so they could come in, buy their stuff and get the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yes. I, you know, it's not to kind of go off on a tangent here, but it, it kind of, the the way that they've been starting to do these sales now is kind of taking like the lackluster out of doing it anymore because like um these stores will open at like instead of them like opening like early in the morning on let's say well Black Friday obviously yeah, they, it's, it's not, not like, like, like o'clock yeah, they're, open, they're open Thanksgiving at ten <laughs> yeah they're open at like eight o'clock and Thanksgiving or nine o'clock and I'm sitting there going what is wrong with you people you know and for me it, it's it's just like what this is a holiday why are you doing this on a holiday you know what i mean yeah everyone's it's, trying to get the jump on everyone else right and, have to work in these too, fucking stores. <laughs> and it causes too many problems actually there's been people in target for example that have sued tried to sue the company because they, you know you're forcing these people to work and in most cases yeah they're forcing these people to work they're saying basically you need to work on thanksgiving and their excuse is oh we're paying time and a half um yeah, but if I want to spend time with my family, I should. So, I mean, it, it's getting it's getting a little ridiculous out there. I just wanted to kind of say that real quick. Oh, yeah, no, of course, because not a, okay. Like you said, Black Friday is supposed to be Friday. It's supposed to be after midnight. Then you got places that they're opened at midnight. Then you got places that you know, oh, uh, you know, we're open at eight o'clock on Thursday. And you know, I mean, obviously they don't give a fuck. I mean, the people the the people who own these companies are all sitting at home with their families. It's you know, it's the man, low men on the totem pole that have to come into work. Well, and then, you know, and then how they get you on the how they get them on the uh, the uh, the over, the time and a half is that they just won't have you work a regular eight hour shift because I oh no 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 they usually like I, I've heard them actually do like I mean it won't be like an eight hour shift most of the time but I, I think I've heard like people work like nine hour shifts six hour shifts it's just like what's the point you know what I mean yeah like it, it just takes it takes like a lot of a lot of like the like I I don't want to work for a company kind of deal out of that kind of situation. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to work for a company that says to me, you have to work this day. Well, no, I'm not going to work this day. And it's not like they're forcing you because labor laws, they can't force you. But they can work around those labor laws by saying, well, if you don't work on this day, then we're not going to schedule you for the rest of the weekend or something. Yeah, you know? that's how they fuck you. <laughs> that's how they fuck you. Yes. <laughs> it's, yeah, and exactly. And like I mentioned in the last episode, you know, okay, they won't fire you because you didn't work on Black Friday or, or, or the Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving night into Black Friday. But then, you know, if you come in late or if you, you know, if you, you know, like then they come, then they become real, uh, you know, you get put under the microscope to see what's, you know, if they can fire you for something else that's how they get you you know what i'm saying you know that i mean the original reason is because you didn't work on thanksgiving but then you know they'll wait for you to be late or they'll wait for you to do something you know like you know you're using your phone while you're supposed to be working or something you know they'll find some reason to fucking fire you you know because that's you know and in this economy some people are looking for jobs if you know they they think they're doing you a favor by giving you a job so it's like it's it really is it's a fucked up corporate it is. it's really fucked up and like it's getting to the point where most of these jobs are actually being taken away because the problem is is now that we have computers and everything people are just buying shit online yeah. you know and, and like for example Best Buy like honestly like if Best Buy went away I would be I would be pissed but Best Buy is one of these companies that's actually you know not doing as well as they should be I mean look at what happened with Circuit City bye bye yeah look at what happened with Media Play bye bye yeah. uh, Media Play kind of, I saw Media Play coming because they didn't really they didn't really carry any like um electronics they just had like music and movies and everything mm -hmm. which is fine but at some point you need to make money you know what i mean yeah it's weird yeah it's you know it is it's big giants like it, basically the whole system's got to the whole system's got to be re revamped you know what i'm saying it's not you know they they're holding on to these old uh ways of doing things and things are going to change and hopefully it'll be make things better like right now i'm hoping you know being a father and everything like that and i love my daughter i'm hoping that like right now we're like at the downturn of a cycle you know like how things go in cycles i'm hoping that by the time she gets a little older the economy will be better you know yeah. and, and, <laughs> you know so I'm like you know these things go in cycles so hopefully you know i mean i don't, I don't want her to go through the next well, great depression you know i'm hoping the, that the cycle the, the pendulum swings back and then you know she, when she gets a little older you know she doesn't have to work at some fucking bullshit place for you know basically over minimum wage you know just over minimum wage you know to, to, to barely live you know i'm hoping that the economy picks up by the time she gets old enough by the time she gets to working age 
I, I just really hope like the it just it, it turns around to where these jobs that used to be like it, really what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see two things. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I'm seeing is a lot of fast food restaurants popping up, and those are the really the only big kind of jobs that you can get right now that are readily available right now. Mm-hmm. Or and we're not going to talk about temporary work because you know we all know that there's temporary work out there around this time of year. Um, but there's also like this thing with the, the new Obamacare that's going on mm-hmm. um, that these employers don't want to want to schedule anybody. And I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, uh, but they, they won't schedule you over 30 hours. Yeah. And it, it, it's getting a little ridiculous because it's like, like, for example, um, if you don't have enough people on when we get into this time of year, for example, and you're as a manager, you're only working like 30 hours. There's, it's kind of hard to cover those hours when you don't have enough people on. So how am I supposed to take care of all the customers and do the things I'm supposed to do when you won't let me go over 30 hours? You know what I mean? That's how they fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, so this is going to be a running gag throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Because you're, well, you're, you're a man. I mean, you know, I, you won't get into where you work, but you're a manager, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's I'm like, yeah. the manager. And, and, it's, and, you know, it's not like back in the day before – it's not like back in the day, like, you know, where, you know, you used to be able um, to work over 30 hours, you know, work close to 40 hours and be okay. Now, because of all that healthcare stuff, they want to keep payroll down. And it's just like, how am I supposed to make a living off of 30 hours? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I do have two jobs, obviously, but I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's to the point where it's like, okay, maybe you need to make some exceptions. And understand that Obamacare is not always about this. But again, if it does say 30 hours as full time, that should probably be up to like 35, and they should change that as part of the Obama plan. Yeah, I don't know. That's it is that's getting depressing. Let's let's move on to. I'm having pussy. Yeah, problems. I know. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Wait, wait, pussy problems? I'm having pussy problems. And probably that I no. Uh basically <laughs> you know, like, go on. I have a cat. My roommate has a cat. Actually she has two. Oh, right? see, yeah. I'm see, just leaving like, it way open. See people are just like, wait, I thought we were talking about sex. Where did this come why are we talking about no, cats? Having, well, technically, yeah, cats are pussies. And oh, I don't cool. know what it is. My I I got my cat, my 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 one cat who's been with me since two thousand and one. So he's you know, twelve years old now you know he's probably going to be with me another two or three years before he finally passes or whatever the case may be um he's getting a, he's gotten like fucking clingy and i don't know what the hell it is now you've been to my house and and you know my right. cat anakin or whatever he's like uh i don't know what it is he's gotten really like if i get up he'll follow me to the next room if i go to the kitchen he'll follow me to the next room uh you know when i lay down he has to like lay on top of my head and I've gotten like it's like having like a little brother. I've never had a little brother, and <laughs> and it's like it's like having this little person following me around. You know, and all pets are basically little homeless people that live in your house. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Right. They don't do anything. They don't. You know, besides be. You know, like it's like it's like having like an entourage. It's like having someone in your house that like they're there just because they make you feel better when you walk in the door and there's something there to greet you. You right. know, like these people have like dogs and stuff like that, and they and 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 not. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shit on dog people, but and it's, it <laughs> so I have like some people like you know they they get really really caught up in the fact that the animal you know makes a big reaction, and I and I guess that's a good complaint. You know, like some people like oh, what are you complaining? The cat, you know, isn't isn't that the whole reason you had a cat for the to him, for him to be around you? But like he's like he's gotten really fucking codependent in his old age or something. Like he's constantly on top of me, and it's like leave me the fuck. Alone alone i can't as soon as i lay down he's he, he has to lay right next to me as soon as i get up he runs to the edge of the bed like and sometimes i'll just like sit up in the bed and he fucking runs to the edge and it's like and it's like i don't want to be mean to him because he does that shit where he walks in front of you i, I don't know if you notice like cats will sometimes walk right oh yeah you. no i have a cat trust me i just, <laughs> this one will like he'll what he'll do is if he's pissed at me he'll go over to the door and start trying and scratching underneath the door just to make noise just to piss me off <laughs> and i and i like because if i'm not paying attention to him you know god forbid if i don't pay attention to the cat you know you, oh well i'm gonna teach you a lesson paul <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck you, you cat. 
And I, when I think about smarter, it, I, smarter I mean, than they think, than they than they appear to be. Yeah, I mean, I do like when I really think about it. I'm like, okay, I'm at work. I'm gone for hours at a time. You know, I do get the fact that like for long stretches of time. Now, mind you, like I said, my roommate has a cat, so he kind of has another cat to kind of relate with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm looking way too far, way too deep into this, and I need to. I really do need a girlfriend because I'm spending way too much time thinking about my fucking <laughs> cat. But you know, it's like you know, and then then my roommate's cat does that to me also also because sometimes you know i'll leave my door open and my roommate's cat will come into my room and i don't mind he's he's clean and 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 friendly and well he's not he well i guess friendly is not the right word but he's not mean or anything like that you know and then he lays on my bed but then he does it so i got a fucking tag team of you know two guys trying to trip me up when i'm fucking when i'm when i'm trying to get out of bed you know i go to the kitchen one stands in one corner the other one stands in the other well you know (laughs) you know or or, or, one of them stands in the corner and the other one i swear to god like they'll lay right in the middle of the fucking kitchen and it's like you know you guys did not want to be in here until i got in here you know what i'm saying like i could understand if you want to be on a bed because if i was a cat you know when you really think about it and once again i'm putting way too much fucking thought into this okay think about the size of a human bed compared to a cat that would be like us laying on a bed that's like you know 100 feet long that's awesome i would if i you know if that was if, if i could invent a hundred foot bed that i could you know just relax on and big giant blankets that'd be awesome and right. I could just I could understand them coming up on the bed, but it's like as soon as I get up to go to the room, I go to the kitchen, you know. And I'm not one of those people. I could understand if if I fed my cats, like as in like you know, if I gave them scraps or if I gave them you know, but whatever the case may be, you know, like I don't I don't give my cats treats or anything like that. But they follow me around, like I got fucking like I got tuna in my fucking pocket, and it's like it's driving me fucking nuts. I mean, I don't know. I just wanted to get that out there. Um, so I'm having pussy problems. Uh, <laughs> Dude, maybe you should say you're having cat problems because yeah. a lot of people are going to sit there and go, pussy problems? <laughs> uh, but anyways. Yeah, you need a girlfriend, man. We need to get you laid. Yeah. Um, classy cat or Rick's Tally Ho? Uh, <laughs> anyways, we'll go to a commercial break, shouldn't we? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we got like five minutes. Well, it, while you, while you, okay, just to let people know that, that, uh, what you just mentioned, classy cat and Rick's Tally Ho are two strip clubs. Here in Rochester. In Rochester. Um, I by the way, I've never to, gone to these strip clubs. I need to let everybody know that. I went to one called the Mirage. It's still there. It is okay. still there, actually. Actually, I went there and it was back when I was still with my baby mama. Um, and like, Go on. and <laughs> and we had. Now, don't get me wrong. It's uh, well, guys, I, I, and I've I've said this a long time ago. And and I've always recommended if you have if you have an opportunity to go to a strip club with another woman, like you know what I'm saying, if you have someone that's down, um, you know, that's cool, you know, some I mean, some women have bisexual tendencies, some women, you know, whatever the case may be. My point is, is going to a strip club is fun. Going to a strip club with a woman is ten times more fun. Of course, I mean, it depends on the woman if she's open minded and cool and into it. Um, because what happens is when you walk in the door, obviously these girls who are strippers, they're used to dealing with creeps all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, guys overstepping their boundaries, guys saying outlandish shit to them. But when you go with a woman, one, I mean, I would easily say, and I'm not even thinking I'm exaggerating, 75% of the strippers are bisexual or just straight up lesbian or whatever the case may be. Um, so when you come in with a woman, it kind of gives you a little bit of a stamp of approval. Like, okay, this guy's not a total creep because he's there with the woman, even if it's a female friend, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, you know, um, uh, so th- the strippers kind of like, they put down their guard just a little bit because, you know what I'm saying? They're used to dealing with creepy guys all day. So, you know, I definitely recommend to guys, if you, if you really want to have fun, if you have a female friend, a female coworker, if your girlfriend or wife are down, it's so much fun. But okay. So, but we went to to the mirage and i'll be honest with you like i mean it was you know of course it's there's nothing wrong with seeing women dance you know topless or whatever the case may be but we went and we got a uh, you know we had a, a couple lap you know a, a couple's lap dance not a couple lap dances you know a where couple's you, lap dance yeah two people hmm. with the, with the, with the, yeah go and, on and and, and <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, don't be wrong. It was fun as hell, you know. Um, and especially, like I said, I mean, this definitely comes down to you being with someone that doesn't, uh, you know, it's not going to be a wet blanket. You know what I'm saying? And it was fun. But like the girl, like the girl we both agreed on, which, you know, I don't know, for some reason, like she was cute. But then when we went to, went to the dance, like, I don't know, she got like depressed or some shit like that. Like, like the, the stripper got depressed. The stripper got depressed. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it was just, I guess, you know what it was? I think I, my, my baby mama at the time, like, we're at, was asking her a couple questions or whatever. 
like about her life. And it shows you the difference between guys and girls. Like, you know, guys don't give a fuck about a stripper's life. We, you, know, <laughs> you know, we're kind of, a, you know, we're dogs where we are creeps. Um, so like the girl was kind of like getting into her life a little before the lap dance. Cause you know, it's one of those deals where like, okay, you know, you want to dance. And of course, you know, the stripper is the, the whole point of a strip club is the girl to get you into the private room so you can get a dance, which is, you know, that they really don't, you know, as stripping and getting dollars or whatever, that's their money's not in that. The money's getting you into the, the private room for a dance. So, uh, like I said, so and then, of course, what they do is um, what would be her doing a dance for, you know, what would be the time? Because basically you go into the private room for the length of a song. So you're in the private room for like three minutes. But now if it's a, if it's a couple's dance, you know, a couple's uh, you know, show or whatever, you know, now it's, you know, they're now they're charging you for two people for the same amount of time. It's not like she's going to be there for six minutes or whatever the case may be. And for some reason, my baby mama started asking her fucking questions and was like, this fucking girl's life was depressing. So it's like, <laughs> so it kind of ruined, it kind of ruined the experience for me. And, um, I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm probably one of the only guys that's never gone to a strip club. Never. Shit. Oh no. And I, I was. Let me tell you, bro. I was in New York City before Giuliani cleaned up the strip clubs. <laughs> Back when they were basically, basically whorehouses. That the strip clubs were the the front part of the strip club was basically a way to display to you the girls you can fuck in the back. But <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I I can tell you like it's not like I wouldn't like. There's been times, dude, like where I've been really depressed and I'm just like, dude, I. I I probably in that instance would have gone, but like, I've always like, I don't know, like I've had this like high standard, like if I go to a strip club, then I've hit a new low, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, am I wrong about that? I mean, no, no, I, I get, but you know, it is, they are, if you're, if you're a guy and you're single, they're very addicting because when you walk in the door, these girls know how to uh, play on your insecurities. They know how to play on. Um, and that's their job. They do it, you know, eight hours a day or sometimes even more than that. You know, they 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 know how to make you feel better about yourself. And of course, you know, they're doing this while they're taking money from you. So it kind of like if you're in that wrong state of mind and you're single and you go to a strip club, you know, because you're financing the fantasy. You know what I'm saying? You're You're basically paying someone to pretend like they like you. And, uh, you know, and trust me, these girls are very fucking good at it because I would say in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, well, no. OK. Yeah. But early 2000s, more of the late 90s. You know, I was I used to go to strip clubs all the fucking time. You know, what I'm saying it was like before I met my wife and stuff like that. And, and so it was just it was very addicting, you know. And like I said, I was I was I went to New York strip clubs before Giuliani cleaned up New York. So those were you know, I was I was going to strip clubs before I was even of legal drinking age. And you're gonna laugh. I went to these clubs with cops because I I used to be an auxiliary police officer in New York City. And basically, an auxiliary police officer is a you know a cop that doesn't get paid. Um, so we would hang out with the cops, and the cops knew the dirtiest fucking places in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know where all the vice, you know, and you know, and and you know, and they were, I I've been in clubs while the vice squad has fucking while the vice squad came in, and I mean, you know, they were looking for you know they were looking for seeing if girls are doing prostitution type stuff, and it was a uh, so you know it's not I don't I, I get what you're saying like you know it feels like you're hitting a new low. I mean, if you're with the guys and you're going with the right mentality, like you're just gonna go and have fun then yeah. it's a blast if you go into if you go in with the wrong mentality and you feel like you're feeling depressed or whatever and you're like and you get into that that whole set like oh she really likes me then that's the, that's the oh wrong, that's yeah. the wrong yeah. mentality yeah. to get into because you'll go to the strip club and, and you'll get suckered out of all your fucking money um, well that's the thing like i i, I dude like i i don't have money <laughs> like i'm not gonna go there and fucking blow my money on some girl i don't even know fuck that shit <laughs> Fuck so, that shit. With that, we are at the half hour mark, so we'll be right back with more dick and fart jokes. Dick and fart. Click and hit, enhancing the experience for all recreational smokers. Click and Hit is a one-handed portable vaporizer. This smoking pipe has a compact four-stage design, complete with a built-in, windproof, butane refillable torch lighter. The large burn chamber holds your stash of legal herb or pipe tobacco. Click the button to ignite and inhale as usual. When you are done, put it back in your pocket for later. Smoke anytime with the touch of a button. No more carrying around grinders and tins. You can leave the pipe, rolling papers, and even your lighter at home. The Click and Hit cordless vaporizer is no bigger than a normal cigar, making it the world's smallest and most discreet vaporizer. It's perfect for use in small places or shared rooms. It's efficient getting five to eight drawers from your packed chamber. It's affordable at just $19.95 each. Buy three and the shipping is free. Buy four and you get the fifth one free. Visit www.click-the-letter-n-hit.com 
clickandhit.com. That's clickandhit.com. And now for listeners of Two Strangers One Podcast, you can use promo code STRANGERS and receive 10% off your purchase at clickandhit.com. That's promo code STRANGERS for 10% off your purchase. This episode of Two Strangers One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. And we're back. Um, so here. And I Welcome love to Chris like, and Paul's dick and fart jokes. Oh, I'm sorry. So I had, <laughs> I mean, come on, let's get real here. I had this, this show I've got, I've, I do nothing but be real on this show. I went to, uh, you know, of course. So you be real on this show? Yeah. Maybe you haven't heard the last couple podcasts. Holy fuck. I've gone <laughs> off on like tangents, like nothing. <laughs> By the way, uh-huh. State Farm, uh-huh. I got you in a vice now. If you don't, if you fuck with me, I'm going to tear you up on this podcast. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> And, well, basically, I was, you know, guys look at pornography on the internet. It's prevalent. It, it wouldn't be a billion-dollar industry if guys didn't fucking do it. So, um, you know, you go to a site, and, you know, you go to look at videos and stuff like that. And then there's, like, a pop-up where it's, you know, of course, that's how they make their money. It's a pop-up to another site about chatting. Not chatting. That's not the right word. Webcam girls. Oh, where, Jesus you know, Christ. There's girls, and you can you can talk to them. And and, and 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 trust me, I, I read the fine print. How it is is that you know you go now you're allowed to chat with these girls for free. And and what it is is you're chatting as in you know uh, you and it's kind of like going to a strip club, you know. At the, but in this situation, you will you will almost never see uh, these these girls because I actually read the fine print. Uh, they won't get naked. Like the, you know, they could do everything but be naked. Like you know, they could have a cut. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what side are we talking about this again? <laughs> it's one. It's called Live Jasmine, and what it is is because what they want you to do is they want you to go into a private chat room, and then you're paying. You're paying like. All right, you know, I gotta look at this real quick because <laughs> <laughs> now I'm kind of confused. Like, the, what, so they want you to pay. They want you to pay so you can go into a private room, so then you can see them naked and stuff like that. But for oh, the no, time no, no, being, oh, no, okay, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, now, for the time being, of course, they'll be in their panties, or they'll be, um, you know, basically, you know, they'll wear a shirt. Where you can see their nipples through it and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. I just brought, pulled up the site. And yeah. don't get me wrong. There are guys who say, oh, let me see your tits. Let me see your nipples. Let me see your ass. You know, guy, you know, once again, guys are being super vulgar. And, right. and so the girls, you know, their whole job is to try to seduce you into going into the private chat, kind of like going to strip clubs. And they want to seduce you into going into the, the private room for a private dance. So um, now I always thought these things were some sort of I, not a scam. That's not the right word. But I was they, are, these they were like, are a scam. But well, they're a scam. But I mean, I always thought they were kind of like pre-recorded or or you know some sort of way to kind of like get you. Now, as a goof, I was just in a weird mood last night. I decided, like, I, I, you know, I was on, I was with one, you know, and of course, you know, these girls, uh, you know, they have to deal with jerks all day long. Uh, but I was just saying weird things because the girl kept like one of the girls was like she kept like licking her teeth to kind of like show like trying to be seductive and stuff like that. So I was writing like your teeth must be tasty. Um, <laughs> she yeah. kept like twirling her hair, and I was like, I was like, you know, that's bad for your scalp, <laughs> you know. And so, uh, so that was one. And then it, it, after a while, it, it switches. Like they'll let you, you know, look at one girl, but then after a while, it kind of automatically switches over to somebody else. So of course, you know, the next girl, she's kind of cute and everything like that, and and you could actually and and, a, and what happens is is these girls basically go to like little like, not little it's not the right word but it's basically like warehouses you know what i'm saying and they kind of have you know for the lack of a better term like little rooms set up basically you know they dress it up to look like a bedroom right. and they hang out but you know since they're there in front of the computer all day they're allowed to listen to 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 music and stuff like that so of course you know you could turn on the microphone well not you know you could turn on to listen what to what they're listening to and of course it's always fucking horrible horrible dance music and stuff like that and i guess you know if you got to be if you have to pretend like you like strangers for fucking eight hours a day i guess you need music that kind of gets you amped up so um you know i would you know at a, as a goof i said you know oh touch your nose because i was just testing to see if this shit is real because the first girl didn't respond she didn't you know she just like you could tell she was reading it and kind of like looking kind of like what the hell's going on so i was like and so like she was she was touching her nose and stuff like that i'm like oh you're the best or whatever she started laughing and stuff so it was like i almost let 
let me tell you, bro, you know, the whole reason I even read the fine print, because I just, you know, I almost spent money to fucking chat with a fucking girl in the fucking chat room as a webcam girl. Dude, dude we need to get you laid, man. <laughs> but um, but it, it, it was one of those deals where, like, had it been cheaper, I probably would have done it. But it was, like, $30 for, like, you get, like, credits, but then, like, the credits count, the credits count, like, literally, the credits count, like, per second. Right. And you're uh, in the private room. It's kind of like, it's like calling phone. I, I, I hate to admit it though. Like, dude, like I, I actually like, it, this wasn't any time like in the last year or two, but like there was a time where I was really, really depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I went on one of these sites. I think it's that one that's always, um, advertised on spike late at night. Um, but, um, like I spent money on that, those sites and it was just, you know, basically what would happen was, is you would go into these chat rooms and the girl would take like, she wouldn't even get naked. Like it, it would be like, she you would take her sweet time and then you would run out of credits mm-hmm. and it's just like you know that's it, it, it's not worth it dude like it's like I, i'm even i'm even it. it's even sad for me to sit here and talk about it but you know it, it can show you how depressing like you know you can get yeah i mean like i said i was you know obviously if i went to the site i was kind of in a in a mood you know what i'm saying i was in a, <laughs> it was kind of yeah you know the, my engine was going and stuff like that and this girl was very very cute and so like i said i mean uh, you know a, a sucker and his money are easily parted you know what I'm saying or you know i guess the term the old phrase goes a fool and his money are easily parted so it's you know i mean trust trust me you know or had i had the disposable income to kind of throw it away on something like that i probably would have but um i just wanted to throw that out there because i think that's kind of interesting you know just gives you a little taste of what's <laughs> what's going on in my life yeah dude um, like dude like i'm gonna be honest with you man like it's it's taken me a long time to find find somebody that actually like I can communicate with. You know, I've talked about this and blah blah blah. You know, you people are probably going just take me over there and kill me right now. He's gonna be sappy. Um, <laughs> like you know. It, it's kind of nice not having to sit there and have to pursue all these women that are pretty much going to just either shoot you down, use you, or play you for play you for a fool. You know, yeah. like it, 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 it's. It, I can't imagine at your age, like you know, having to go back out on this dating scene that's just completely and utterly terrible. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's just it, uh, yeah because people, especially at this time of life, like you know, like I guess I'm 36, and it's like everybody at this age, you know, there's no such thing as like a girl without kids. There's no such thing as a girl who's not you know divorced or hasn't well, been no, in, no, in at least no, no. one major relationship. You know, there is there is girls out there that don't have kids that are around our age. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's usually 90 percent of the time they're pretty much party girls mm-hmm. and really when you get to like our age it's kind of just like why the fuck do i want a party girl yeah i want some girl to just use me the whole fucking time yeah that's what i want no you know i mean it's it's kind of like like my girlfriend kind of thinks sometimes like she's and this is a good thing you know she kind of thinks that you know she's using me in a sense because you know right now because she moved all the way up from pennsylvania right now she doesn't have like she doesn't have a car she doesn't she doesn't have her own place and she's used to that but because of the shit that happened with her douchebag ex you know all that stuff got taken away from her you know and it's so hard as as an independent woman for her to sit there and have to depend on other others to help her you know mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong you know it's you know it's i don't have a problem like draw, driving her around or doing anything like that you know it, it just it just sucks to see her go through some of this stuff and you know have to deal with some of the things that she's had to deal with in her past mm-hmm. you know i mean let's 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 face it there's the, the guys out there that have that treat these women badly are the reason why like we can't find any good women anymore yeah i mean if we could it, it's not like back in the day where you know basically families would set each other up like women were like old-fashioned like they would take care of you and you would take care of them women would actually cook you know mm-hmm. whereas now a woman's like oh i know how to cook in the microwave ha <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I, I don't want those kind of women. I don't want a woman that cooks in the microwave. I want a woman that I can actually cook food, yeah. you know? And I want I want somebody that's actually going to take care of me so that I sit there and I go, you know what? I'm going to take care of this girl too, you know? Not just sit there and be like, I'm going to take you and use all your fucking money, you know? <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just pathetic. And I, and I dude, I, I applaud you for what you're about to go into because it's just, uh, you're going to deal with women or be like, oh, we should meet up. And then they never want to meet up. They always make an excuse. Or some of these girls are going to try to catfish you and shit. Ugh. Yeah. It's just a bad world out there, my friend. 
Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like I'm one of those deals where like I'm, I'm good enough with myself that I don't like. I mean, yeah, I want someone there, but you know, as long as you know, if it, right now I'm living, I'm doing what I got to do, you know. So you know, hopefully, you know, if, if, if you know, love me or leave me alone. If you know, if you're not gonna, if it's not gonna be, you know, I don't. That's, that's the last. That's, that's the one thing I am kind of scared of. Like, I don't want to fucking muddy the waters, man. Right now, everything is kind of going cool and going smooth, you know. <laughs> I don't need anyone right. coming over here and fucking, you know, polluting my fucking lake over here or whatever. <laughs> polluting my fucking lake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, right now, you know, everything is going relatively oh. smooth, you know? It's just, you know, being single kind of sucks, but, you know, it's, you know, but uh, like I said, I, I, I think I'm establishing myself to a point where, you know, hopefully I won't get caught up in fucking bullshit like I have in the past. Um, well, let's, I mean, I, I'm kind of, you know, this is getting depressing here for a second. Um, <laughs> as of right now, or not as of right now, about a half an hour ago, an hour ago, uh, trending on Twitter is Hannah Montana. Um, I guess apparently, uh, in, wait, in... it's the, the stripper's name is Hannah Montana. That's why it's trending. <laughs> Well, I guess apparently um, Disney is is showing like a bunch of Halloween themed episodes. They're ho- they're of, showing of... Halloween pornos. No. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, Disney <laughs> is is you know and in, in getting psyched up for Halloween or whatever. Uh, they have uh, episodes of, of you know of their shows or whatever. So like they're giving like Hannah Montana. So <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny that. That's actually trending on Twitter that people are like, you know, Hannah Montana. So and you would think with all the Miley Cyrus stuff that they would have, uh, you know, they would have of all the shows, you're not going to stand giving like the Kim Possibles and shit like that. Yeah, you would, you would think that you wouldn't want to put that on there because now, you know, damn well, there's going to be like 50 phone calls at Disney right now saying, why are you putting Hannah Montana on? But then again, I guess it's, also, it's slightly brilliant because if people, you know, because if, if it's trending on fucking Twitter, obviously, you know, uh, it, like I would not. And and trust me, it's not like I'm some creep that watches Hannah Montana. I I honest, I've seen a couple of episodes. Um, you know, I have a stepson, and he used to watch it, and that's how I'm more familiar with it. But uh, you know, it's one of those deals where like it's trending on Twitter, so people who had no idea that it, that it was on are going to go and turn on their you know turn it to the Disney Channel, whatever. And watch it, which you know, once again, is slightly brilliant. <laughs> right. You know, and um... well, you know, I mean, she was such a popular character, so to speak, in the Disney universe for so long that you know, it's kind of hard for them not to show some of these things. I mean, you know, you have the Hannah Montana movie, you have um, oh yeah, they all of the a episodes. lot of money into that. Oh yeah, and I'm sure I know it's some they they used to show all the Hannah Montana things all the time. So I don't know if it's still on, but you know, they're probably going to get their bang for their their buck so to speak <laughs> get your bang for your buck out of miley cyrus um <laughs> all right <yeah. laughs> and yeah it's it and you know what it was it's like like i'll go like i go to you know i i'm not gonna you know i'm not there's no shame in my game you know i go to dollar stores and stuff like that no and, shame in my game <laughs> yeah isn't there? no shame in my game uh but you know i go to like dollar stores or up here there's a thing ollie's which is kind of you know just yes people know, it's kind of like yes. it's a place that's sells you know uh and you know their whole deal is like we sell stuff we sell it cheap because we want to get it out of the fucking door and you know if you want it you better buy it today or you're probably never going to see it again right and, and i was in ollie's the other day and they had uh you know uh, uh hannah montana like uh it was basically like a clothes hamper you know what i'm saying like I, one of those unfoldable collapsible clothes hampers they had Hannah Montana, you know, window clings, you know, and it's like this stuff, this, you know, her, you know, from her innocent Disney. years, it's still floating around. And, and Disney probably just like was like, here, just take it, get it out of here. <laughs> get it out of here. We need to get <laughs> rid of it. Sending up in dollar stores and all these exactly. things. But it's just, I, you know, that stuff is still floating around there. You know, there's still Hannah Montana merchandise that you could buy in the store. But, you know, after, you know, her, her big uh, disgrace or whatever. But actually, I watched the, uh, I, I happened to catch the Saturday Night Live she hosted about two weeks ago. And it was like, in the very beginning, uh, she does a bit, she does it, she did a sketch where uh, there's a girl on the show that, that does a pretty, uh, a pretty good Miley Cyrus impersonation uh, back when she was doing Hannah Montana. And so she did like, uh, you know, it was her and she was dressed the way she was for the MTV Music Awards. 
and the girl, the the, the character from from Saturday Night Live, was coming to visit her, like a ghost of Christmas past or whatever kind of a deal. Where like I'm you from the past, and I wanted to tell you, you know, not to make, not to go out there, and you know, you're gonna ruin everything we've worked for, and stuff like that. So she, you know, she kind of the fact that she kind of made fun of herself on that, you know, was pretty. It was pretty funny, you know. what I'm saying it's one of those deals where she, you know, like it's it, she's she's showing a very brilliant move, you know. What I'm saying by acting like a fucking idiot, it's actually very brilliant because it's you know it's getting the fact it's getting us to talk about her and stuff like that and uh so you know i just thought you know and it's on it's on well it's on hulu plus i don't know if I, you know i and plus i just wanted to just throw out there that hulu plus fucking sucks uh but my roommate has it and you know she she let me uh, i have it on my playstation 3 you know you she's using her account and so um i wouldn't pay for hulu plus but uh i that's how i caught the episode of sign alive but it, i mean it's out there and it's pretty funny if you get a chance to to, to give it a, a view it's, it's, i'm gonna it, have to take a look at that yeah yeah it's one of those deals where it's like you know she was smart enough to make fun of herself and it kind of like uh de-escalates the whole situation like it's one thing to you know easily throw rocks at her and oh you acted like a whore or whatever but you know what i'm saying it's like one of those deals where like you realize that she's in on the joke also you know it's kind of well, it's brilliant <laughs> I, th- I think what she's trying to go for is she's trying to be a, a mix of a rocker chick and Madonna and it's I mean okay it, it's it's brilliant because it's getting attention it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing but what these girls don't seem to understand and she's not the only one that's done this let's face it she's not the only one that's done this um what these girls don't understand is that when they portray this image of themselves when they're young and they go out and they try to turn into this I gotta think of the best words to say. A little more legitimate. <laughs> um, skanky ass hoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I mean, well, not all of them. I mean, look at look at Selena Gomez. She doesn't look like a whore. Okay. And by the way, I, I think I remember them saying something about her being like she was in a really nice dress, mm-hmm. but they thought that she looked like a whore. And I'm like, I- I'm sorry. Did you not look at what Miley Cyrus is wearing? <laughs> I'm like, y- so you're gonna call her a whore, but yet Miley Cyrus is a whore. <sighs> Maybe we need to have a little conversation. But anyways, like... But did you... I mean, not for nothing. Did you see Spring Breakers? Like, Breakers? No, I did not get a chance to see it. Yeah. I, it I mean, it's not bad. the greatest movie in the world, but... And, and, and what I loved, what they did about the movie is because, like, I think, like, two little girls or, like, ex-Disney chicks or whatever is that... Okay, I mean, they're... Don't get me wrong. They're kind of dressed skanky and stuff like that, and they're running around in bikinis, but they kind of get, like, every other girl in the movie to be topless. So it's one of those deals where, like, <laughs> there's tons of nudity except for the actual stars, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, it's, you know it's but so, it's, it's, so basically the stars don't get naked, but everybody else does. Yeah, it, I mean, it, I mean, it's it, literally the movie starts, and I wouldn't say thirteen seconds into watching the movie. Now I don't even think I'm exaggerating. You know, there's a girl shaking her tits in slow motion. You know, out of their bra, out of their bikini top. Well, <laughs> which if you, it, it's kind of funny you bring that point up because I, I actually saw Don John recently, and um, oh, okay. there's two things funny about the, the movie. First of all ton of porn in there um you'll have to watch it to see what i'm talking about but also what's funny is at the end of the credits one of the logos that they they put at the credits like they have like you know um i think kodak was the film they shot it in and you know whatever else and whatever else Pornhub. <laughs> Pornhub's <laughs> fucking logo was there and i i just started dying on the floor i was just like this is so fucking hilarious and I, because yeah, I was waiting for, well, that, that's another story for another time off the air. But basically, like, it, it was just, it was just so hilarious to see like th- that logo on the credits. I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my fucking god, that's hilarious. But anyways, um, um, so actually, well, by the time this episode comes out, it'll be, it'll be out already. But I'm actually by this time tomorrow, I'll be playing Batman Origins, Batman Arkham Origins for the PlayStation Three. Um, and you can tell me how that. that that is, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Batman Arkham City, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, was quite possibly one of the best games I've ever played. Um, now, of course, just understand that Arkham Origins is a different company, but what they did was when Batman Arkham City was ported over to the Nintendo Wii, which, you know, the, I mean, you know, the Wii compared to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox, come on, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's 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 it, you know, that's, you know, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 are kind of, you know, the, the, the top dogs. 
Um, well, Nintendo well, until PS4 and uh, Xbox come out next month. But oh yeah, Xbox no, no. But I'm, month. I'm just saying is that you know, I've all, uh, Arkham City came out like what two years ago or something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. I mean, at the time, and so you know, this the, what happened was there was a company, and and I want to say it's like it's it's a, a gaming company in Canada mm. or Vancouver or whatever, and what they did was they were the ones tasked with the job of um, porting it over to the Wii U, and they call it the Armored edition or whatever the case may be and so i mean it, it had to be kind of a hard job to do so um rocksteady the original creators of you know batman arkham asylum and arkham city uh rocksteady isn't involved in this one but since this other company and i can't believe i forgot the name uh, since they were involved in porting over Arkham City to the Wii U, um, they were given the job of handling Batman Arkham Origins. So it um, it looks very interesting. Um, they've 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 definitely kept true to the the feel and the vibe and everything like that. I mean, of course, and it's also a kind of a prequel. I'm kind of like I'm not really happy the fact that it's a prequel because Arkham City, uh, and I'm not going to spoil it. Arkham City is kind of left on a bit of a, a of a of a cliffhanger on something that's supposed to happen. Which would you know? It's kind of it's kind of like I said. I don't want to spoil it, but it's something that they could have easily picked up on and, and ran with. And so I'm just kind of I'm a little disappointed that it's a prequel, but it looks good. I'm psyched about it. It's going to have online play where you can play with your friends and be on different teams and stuff like that. So um, I'm like I'm super psyched. So it's it's going to be a midnight release. You know, it was at the GameStop that I I was at uh, that I mentioned a couple episodes back where the manager was a bit of a dick. Um, but you know, I will be I will I I plan to be in line and I'm off on Friday also. So I oh, plan God. to be I plan you're gonna be in front of you're gonna be in front of that TV like oh, I plan to be yes. spending Friday Batman game yes. all day long. <laughs> you know what you should do? Like, you should actually um, play the game and then do a review about it. Oh yeah, uh, you should definitely do a review. And I've been, you know, I've been following up on on a lot of. Unfortunately, like, just the internet being the internet, you know, a bit of it was spoiled for me already, but. You know, I'm still. It's one of those deals where I'm so psyched that I don't care that it's spoiled for me. I still want to fucking play it. <laughs> so, so am I use? Am I allowed to use the T word at all? T word. Uh, you lost me there. Oh, tsunami. <laughs> yes. Am I allowed to use that on this podcast? Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like shut it all down last episode. <laughs> well, actually, uh, real quick before you get into whatever you got to get into, um, I've been watching that show Gantz. Yes. Um, so I guess Jose is going to be happy about it. Uh, now because my coworker lent me the DVDs. Um, so I've been, and it's, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it, it, it's a very interesting and unique idea for a show. Um, you know, it's obviously, you know, it's one of those, you know, anime is one of those few places where you can continue, you can have very unusual and unique storylines because it's just part of, right. it's part of the, the, the whole genre, you know what I'm saying? You can be totally out there. And um, it's definitely interesting. It's just like, now I know, and I, and I definitely, you know, like, you know, you, your other podcast, Toonami Faithful, uh, the Toonami Faithful podcast, is, you know, you do a lot of business with Funimation. And, you know, uh, I, you know, when I watch these DVDs, you know, the, the first thing that comes up on a DVD is, you know, Funimation, you should be watching. Yeah. And, and I appreciate that. But it's like, you know, this, the, you know, Gantz is <laughs> totally fucking violent. Uh, you know, heads are exploding all over the place. You know, they're, that's they're, my perfect. That's my perfect cartoon, dude. Like, I can't say anything. Yeah, and I can't it's anything about about that. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, um, and it's like you know, and you know, there are there are just there, there are sex scenes and 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 nudity yep. at certain points, yep. and um, it's just like it's it's funny that you know, and it's nothing against the Funimation people. It's like you should be watching. What I should be watching, fuck. And sex and violence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and well, you gotta... it in a totally fun way. I'm not trying to be. Well, I, I don't remember when Gantz came out, but there again, Funimation because of all these. Well, let's just put it this way: Funimation because of because of Dragon Ball Z. Just that show made Funimation a lot of fucking money. A lot of fucking money. It's to the point where they keep putting it out, and it's still making them a lot of fucking money. <laughs> so they've been able to go out and get these other animes, and you know, Gantz. Is one of those animes they went out and got and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it is I mean, what it is. Just, you know? it's, it's, 
and it's not like I said, um, you know, like I said, if you as long as you prepare yourself, you know, because it's not, a, I, you know, like I don't think they could ever put that on Adult Swim. <laughs> you know? No, no, no. Even, even, uh, I think, I think when we interviewed Jason DeMarco, he said that he's like, as much as I love Gantz, I would never be able to put that on air. Or actually, no, 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 no. Jose said that you couldn't. That he probably he could do as much editing as he would because Jose is a video editor. Mm-hmm. He could do as much editing as he could, but he still couldn't probably get all. <laughs> you probably wouldn't have an episode if he took all that crap like out. A five minute episode. <laughs> I know. And if um, I'm not mistaken, I believe it came out in 2004, 2005, because that's the, those are the years that come up at the end right. when you watch the credits. Um. Yeah, something like that. But w- what I was gonna say about Toonami, though is like you know the the name of the game again is it's Batman. I don't want to get the name wrong. Oh, Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, yeah, that's the new game that's coming out, right? Yes, that's the okay. um, time tomorrow I'll be playing. <laughs> basically, like whenever like a game like this comes out, like a lot of people hit up Toonami and they're like, yeah, because Toonami is known for their game reviews. And, okay. um, you know, this would be, in my opinion, this would be a good one for, for them to review because, you know, it, I'd like to start to see them do a little bit more big games. Like, I don't mind, like, the smaller games, but, you know, I, I'd like to see something like this. Like, this is really huge. Same thing with Grand Theft Auto. A lot of people want to see them do a uh, review on that, too. So I'm kind of hoping that they do that. Mm-hmm. But um, I, speaking of Batman, I was talking to you something talking to you about a little something that i found off the air since we're talking about funimation and batman oh yeah um i found uh for for those of you out there that haven't seen the video and i encourage you to go look on youtube for it um there's a they um oh god what is it i can't think of who it is um you if you look on my facebook chris you can see it uh, on the article but um, there was a there was a YouTube channel that does these verses. These it, it's called Deathmatch, and um, they took on they did this whole CGI animation of Superman versus Goku. Um, and a lot of people on the internet, if you don't know, have been are still talking about it today about you know Goku and Superman going at it. And it actually came out this year, I believe, that they did this. Mm-hmm. Um, and the problem was is they basically used all these mathematical equations, which made my head hurt <laughs> extremely, um, mm-hmm. about how Superman would be able to defeat Goku. Well, after watching the video, I kind of went, first of all, you got a couple things wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and, and for those of you, basically in the video, Superman does kill Goku, but he also destroys the Earth in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, no matter who Superman was in his universe, um, Superman would never a kill somebody unless they were like to the extreme, like we've seen in the new Superman movie. Um, <laughs> or and, and it's, it's a bad guy. Let's let's face it. You know he's not going to kill some just regular person. That's number one. Number two, he's especially not going to destroy the Earth. He was sent there to protect the Earth. So let me get this straight. Not only does he kill somebody, but he he not only does he kill a good guy. But he kill he destroys the Earth and kills everybody on the planet. Mm, yeah, you got that wrong. Sorry, <laughs> but you guys are probably like, "We'll get to the point, Paul. What are you trying to get at?" Um, and basically, when I was on YouTube today, I found this other video talking about um, Goku versus Superman in a different light and saying how Goku would actually win, uh, would actually beat Superman. And the one thing that we the one thing that we we don't understand that we don't know about Superman because. And he says this in this video, which I found so interesting, because I, I never had thought about this until I actually, you know, heard this video. Um, Superman has been changed a lot over the years. Like, yeah. like he's been changed to the point where Superman is pretty much invincible. I mean, yeah, he has the kryptonite flaw, but, like, pretty much, like, this this character can't be killed. Yeah. Unless he's around, unless he's around a red sun, mm-hmm. or he's, or kryptonite's around. And, you know, it, what, what he, the, the guy in the video has explained, and I actually put this up on my uh, Tumblr page, it's paulbescrillo.tumblr.com. Um, basically, and I put, the, yeah, I put the video there, he, he says that, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna make this a fair fight, if we're gonna take this and make this a fair fight, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Goku up through Dragon Ball Z because apparently GT was done by somebody else, uh, not by the guy, not by the original creator of Dragon Ball Z. Um, and um, basically, what happens is basically if you look at what if we take Goku for example, Goku has like Goku really hasn't changed from when he was a kid to up through Dragon Ball Z because you know we're gonna if we're gonna follow a timeline we're gonna keep him canon so to speak. Mm-hmm. Goku hasn't changed and it's been ten to twenty years actually 
you know, because this came out in the early 90s, actually. A lot of people don't know that. It actually, Dragon Ball Z was probably around 1995, 1996 before it actually hit Toonami. Um, but Dragon Ball Z um, basically was, basically has not changed. Like, there was a director's cut, which, which is Kai, but it, nothing really changed about Goku's character. It's the same thing, going through the same, you know, mm. dedicated thing. Superman, when you look at just his canon, like, progression, and not counting in the, the stuff that they've added over the years, the only things he was able to do was, first of all, he was able to jump really high. Yeah, leap tall buildings in a single bound. Single bound, <laughs> but not fly. Okay. He um, is able to go faster than a express train. Well, that's not faster than a speeding bullet or, um, what was the other thing I was, oh, like, apparently he can go faster than the speed of light now, oh, I well, guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and the movie, yeah. They do have him, like, he's done a couple times where he's gone back in time. Okay. Basically, I guess if you're going to go back in time, you have to go faster than... The speed of light, yeah. <laughs> speed of light, yeah. So, um, he has those. Uh, apparently his skin is, cannot be pierced by anything larger than a large round. Mm-hmm. It has to be larger than a large round to pierce his skin. So he's not invincible. And apparently, and that was the other thing, because I... I just thought about it. It was that that was the one thing that I forgot about off air. He could only lift um, huge trucks and cars and vehicles. So anything that weight, he couldn't do like what he can do now, where like it's quadruple pounds or something. Yeah, quadrillion and yeah, like I mean, like Superman. I mean, of course, I hate that. Movie, like fucking Superman returns. He's lifting up a whole fucking island. Yeah, <laughs> like it's it's weird. Like. Uh, you know, uh, to me, like, okay, this is if this is the Superman we're going after, then yeah, Goku's gonna whoop his ass. But like, to me, let, let, let's say we take let's let's say we take that version of that death match. If we were to take if we if we were gonna make this a fair fight, um, I would still give him flying because Goku can fly. We'll, we'll give him that advantage. Um, Goku can go really fast. We'll give we'll give him whatever. We'll give him that advantage too. Strong, yes, we'll give him the advantage. Basically, he's a basically. If you want to think of Super Saiyan, if you want to see, think of Superman in the sense of an anime, he's basically a Super Saiyan. <laughs> if we're gonna get, if we're gonna get, he's a really high level Super Saiyan. Okay, let's let's get let's get down to it. Okay, mm-hmm. but for me, like, w- what really pisses me off is when these people try to have quote unquote a death match when they know damn well it's going to be a draw because Superman will never kill Goku. Now he could defeat Goku, but he would never kill him, and we would never destroy the Earth. And it's always it, it since I've seen that video, it's just fucking bugged me. I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen the video, Chris, but it's just it, it's one of those things that I'm just like, if you're going to do like a death match or a match between two characters, make it a little bit more towards what the characters. Yeah, be a little true. Sure. Right, be more true to what the characters are. That's not being true to it. Yeah. You know, I I don't know about you. What what do you think? Well. I mean, I guess, because see, I never, I've never watched Dragon Ball Z, so I can't. I've, I've seen um, these guys take episodes of Dragon Ball Z and kind of like goof on them, and 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 I, I think it's a kind of a popular series where they kind of like they dubbed over their own voices, and they, I think it's like full, full, full. It's episodes. um, oh god, what is it called? Oh. I've oh. seen that, but I've never seen. I've never actually watched Dragon Ball Z, and like you know, and I went to you know, I went to school. You know, you talking about ninety five. I was in high school at the time, and trust me, I remember being in high school. Um, that's why I'm surprised. Like, are you sure it wasn't like ninety four or ninety three? Because um, I remember in high school, a friend of mine being really into Dragon Ball Z, and like he recommended it to me, and I just never got a chance to to. to grab the DVD or whatever. You know, I, I will say to you, like, if you are coming into Dragon Ball Z for the first time, mm-hmm. um, what I would do is, and the original series was Dragon Ball, when Goku was a little kid. Um, I would start with Dragon Ball and then go to Dragon Ball Z, so that you can get kind of a backstory on, on Goku. Oh, okay. Um, there's not... It's Dragon Ball is kind of... It's not as action-packed as Dragon Ball Z, so you might be like, <sighs> like at some points, but like you know, it, it it's still like it's still important to to kind of watch that and see how he is. And then you know when you see Dragon Ball Z, like it, it's very action-packed. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to, I haven't watched Kai because mm-hmm. Kai is more of like a director's cut, and it's in HD, might I add, I believe. Mm-hmm. Please, people out there that are listening from the tsunami world, please don't butcher me if I'm wrong about that, but. Um, like the regular version, the only thing that was wrong with the regular version of it was that the episodes would draw out. It would be like, oh, we're about to fight. See you next time on Dragon Ball Z. And then they would sit there and be talking some more. And then another episode of them talking. And then they would finally fight. And it was just like, just get to the fucking fight already. 
Friday. <laughs> I'm like, just get to the fight. I just want to see him whoop his ass. Just get to it. You know, there were there were some times where it was like that in Dragon Ball Z, but it's it's a really good series, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 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 usually make fun of it now because looking back on it, you look at like how you know so many people are wanting Dragon Ball Z back. It's just kind of funny because it's like you know. Uh, it's been so overplayed now that to put it on like Toonami again would be like why yeah kind of deal you know what I mean that that's kind of why like people make fun of it these days so mm-hmm. but yeah I definitely if you can um it might be on Netflix actually if you have like Netflix or something or you can get Netflix I would suggest definitely playing that because it's a, it, coming into it on the first time mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a good series. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, like I said, I mean, and obviously I'm a, I'm a little more, you know, my, my political political ties come into a little bit where it's like, you know, because if, if I understand it correctly, Goku is the Japanese Superman. So but I'm an American guy. So, <laughs> so I'm, my money is going to be on truth, justice in the American way. Uh, you know, go big blue uh, Boy Scout. <laughs> um, you know, that's just uh shit so yeah i kind of am i kind of had something i wanted to add to that i lost my fucking train of thought but yeah just i i mean like goku is like like i was telling you like and i don't know if i've said this on the air before but um go dragon ball z is big over there i mean they just did a movie and it did really well overseas which by the way bring it over here and dub it um But, um, like, for example, One Piece is the big thing right now over there. Um, Gundam is really big over there, too. I mean, they have a fucking life-size statue of it over there. I, I showed you a picture. Yeah I've, yeah, I've seen the video. I've seen, yeah, I've seen pictures of, yeah. The- yeah, it's, like, fucking huge. Like, who does that? Who fucking does that? I'm like, <laughs> wow. Like, you guys are really, really about your anime. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, I, I guess you could say Goku is kind of their, um, Superman, but, uh, I think saying Japanese Superman is kind of stretching it because they fucking... I'm sure there's been a Japanese version of Superman at some yeah. point. I mean, they fucking they fucking made a Spider-Man. I, I don't know. Dude, you gotta look at this up and I'm fucking... I've seen it. The Spider-Man where he's like... Spider-Man where he has like a fucking like Zord. Yeah. And and they're going, <laughs> what the... F-? I'm like, this isn't fucking Power Rangers. Stop. <laughs> Just stop, guys. Just stop. And, it, and it's kind of funny because... The animated series, the, the the one in the '90s, they actually put that in one of their episodes as one of the alternate universes. He actually had uh, a robot Spider-Man. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I guess you know, just to kind of make it to make it a bit easier relatable to the culture over there, you know, with the right. and the and everything like that. Um, that's what it, I know, and I caught. I, I remember what I wanted to say. Um, once again, watching the Gants, I love how uh, because you know they dub the episodes, but they leave the music in. You know, and um, oh, I can explain that actually if you want me to, real quick. Okay. Um, basically, what happens is is when when like the American, like for example, all these Japanese. Um, let me uh, let me get a. I gotta think of an example. Um, well, let's take One Piece for example. Um, if you're if you're watching Toonami, for example, you'll mm-hmm. see that it's a Japanese opening. Like they they don't do an English opening. They don't do like you know some English singer singing a English song. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a jap it's the Japanese song. The reason for that is is when they when they bring it over from the Japanese company. Um, pretty much 90% of the time, these Japanese companies don't let them do, you know, an opening. Dragon Ball Z was, like, a, um, an exception, I think, honestly, but, like, they don't, they won't let you, these companies pretty much don't let you change certain things. Like, yeah, you can English, you can do an English dub, but, like, the music in it, the, the opening and the ending credits, Mm -hmm. Japanese, Mm -hmm. nothing. You can't change them. Well, I, I mean, in a show like Gantz, I mean, one thing, I mean, about the opening... It's. I mean, I, one thing that I think they did was cool is because, you know, what, and not for nothing. I mean, you get to watch the credits over and over. Is I think also it's just contractually. I think it contractually obligated because um, it's it's Warner Brothers, but the Japanese arm of Warner Brothers. Uh, right. The, the, the artists that do the both the beginning and the the end credits, I believe, are both under Warner Brothers. So I think I think they're kind of um, uh, contractually obligated to keep those songs in. But at least the the beginning song, there's a little bit of English in it. You know, they 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 uh you know there's kind of uh you know kind of has like a I don't know, reggae is not the right word, but they, I guess that's the closest thing. I, you know, like 
it's like a reggae but with chinese and i mean excuse, with japanese and english there's like a couple of words here and there and um and i guess you know, obviously there's certain words that they have to use the english version of because maybe uh you know it doesn't have a, a japanese version of that word but i just love the ending where um the the last song the the, the closing song is kind of like this sad love song and and then but she has the line is I'm as lonely as floating ice, which it's just that that, that yeah. line just I, I love it. There's some I mean, I guess I don't know if she's trying to say she's like a glacier, like a glacier is lonely. But I guess the translation makes it floating ice. But I just I just found that hilarious. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've been I talking mean, about yeah. tsunami for like the past 15 years. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't all tsunami. It was I was trying to just trying to relate like I would like to see like the game re- that game have a game review on tsunami. And I guess Dragon Ball Z being related to tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> does that but i was kind of more or less trying to get geeky about this you know whole superman versus goku thing because i just uh, i just hate when people fuck with that kind of stuff yeah well i mean you know geeky inc needs a video game review of batman arkham origin <laughs> are you are you volunteering sir <laughs> yeah i mean you know just throw it out <laughs> Um, that being said, um, we've gone way over the time. Yeah, we're way over the time. We're like 20 minutes past the, the, the hour mark. But that being said, uh, I'm not too thrilled with the layout, but you can visit two strangers. Oh, excuse me. You can visit 2s1p.com. See, I've, 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 I still got to get myself out of the habit of saying the other website, but 2s1p.com. Um, it's basically a centralized place where you can find all the links for everything uh, show related. Uh, I do have, uh, well, no, I don't have anything on eBay right now, but you can find the links there. You can find the links to buy my book, Double Jackpot. Um, you can find the links there that will bring you to our iTunes page. Uh, so if you have an iPhone, iPad, iPod, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, iPod, and you got an Android device, Android uh Cell phone, Android, uh, <laughs> tablet, uh, any anything that uses Android, uh, you can find us on the Stitcher app. That's S T I T C H E R, and you can follow us there. And basically, when the episode comes up, uh, it gets updated on Stitcher. And pretty much a lot of podcasts, you know, a lot. Of, if you don't have iTunes, uh, Stitcher is a great alternative. Um, once again, Android devices they're not going to be working with iTunes. Uh, you can find uh, you can find, and basically, you can also find the links to our Facebook page, which is basically facebook.com slash two strangers one podcast all spelled out if you want to contact the show if you're a single lady and you find a guy talking about strippers <laughs> and webcams and video games and anime sexy uh i guess you can email me at uh when you email us at uh two strangers one podcast at gmail.com um sorry ladies paul is off the market uh but you know i'm the one wait we got here. requests no catfish no no i'm just saying is this you know, just letting the ladies know you know before they get all excited you're off the market uh <laughs> yeah apparently apparently i sound like bed aff like but continue okay oh yeah no, well it's actually two things i i guess i, I just want to throw in there real quick one uh, i guess apparently they're already starting to, sh- to shoot little things for the the next batman superman movie because apparently uh they were shooting um a scene in a football stadium which kind of like i mean really you're gonna use a football stadium right after they use the football stadium in the last batman movie but um the 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 jerseys on the 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 players one had gotham and the other one was metropolis so i guess they're already starting to do like initial little things here and there and the rumor is the next batmobile is going to be based on a classic cadillac from like you know 50 years ago or something like that so just throwing that out there um so yeah visit 2s1p.com no it's not a porn site no you won't find a webcam of me um you know you won't have to pay any money to see me you can see this now. I'm at a point where shit. I mean, you could ask you for free. I'll probably do. You? I'll probably do a webcam <laughs> thing for free. I guess as long as you got a Skype. Uh, if you're a lady, of course. Uh, okay. That being said, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, you can find everything on 2s1p.com. It's like I said, the uh, the format isn't what I'm 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 not digging the format right now, and we're gonna be working on it. But shit, I paid for it, so um, you know the the, the it, it will you there is a player on the site as of this part of this as of this recording where you could pretty much listen to every podcast. But I mean. If you're not going to sit in front of your computer, once again, you can find us on iTunes or the Stitcher app for Android devices if you want to listen to us while you're in your car or while you're working or whatever the case may be. And I give the floor to you, sir. And thank you for the floor. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, of course, at Paul Pascrillo. My last name is spelled P-E-S-C-R-I-L-O. Uh, you can also, like I was, I said just a few minutes ago, um, I have a Tumblr page, which... Maybe we should get a Tumblr page, Chris. 
Um, That's all. <laughs> another fucking thing to update. Yeah, I know. <laughs> PaulPascrillo.tumblr.com. Uh, I actually just put up the whole uh, Goku versus Superman thing up there, like I said. Uh, so check that out. It's also on my Twitter account, so if you follow my Twitter, you know, it'll be there. By the way, I can be a little violent on my Twitter, so just prepare yourself. <laughs> um, you can also, obviously, Tsunami Faithful Podcast. You can hear me every week. Uh, the one thing I really want to talk about and tell you guys about is we had um, Chris P on from yeah, great interview is, chris pranoski yes he has um he is the the man in charge of titmouse uh so we had a nice conversation with him so basically any episode anything if you if you ever watched any show on usually on adult swim but they've they've yes. branched out to disney and 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 now nickelodeon any show that ends where you hear that chirp that's titmouse <laughs> and you know kind of we're, we're kind of hoping that you know because Really, Chris, the the problem right now is there's not a lot of American anime out there. Not not American anime. I, I shouldn't say <laughs> yeah, kind of American part- terms, Paul. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so. go on. And and then trust me, because like you guys did the interview. Now, mind you, I just want to let me just put this out there that you used my question. You didn't give me fucking credit. Um, <laughs> I did your question. Was that? I did use your question. Yes. Yeah, you didn't give me credit because at least like you know, okay, you go go back and forth. And at least you could have you could have taken two fucking seconds and said, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, this this question is from. Well, Chris. I'm gonna, I'll say it on here. Yes, Chris gave me a question. And I used yeah, it. not to the fucking Chris Pernowski because because and, and 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 like I said, I know uh, the Tsunami Faithful is is. A a different baby because i would have loved to have been at that episode but only because like not for nothing like i would love to work for chris pranoski like you know what i'm saying like i, I you know i i trust me it would have been an hour of me asking him for a job uh but, you know i would love to be a writer for for titmouth um but uh george christick actually sent me um you know and not to blow up his spot but he he sent me a couple of uh his from his computer uh scripts from megas xlr you know just old scripts i mean scripts that have shows that already exist but just so kind i could get an idea of what the format of um, you know, because I, you know, and I think I've made this known to the show before. You know, I'm I am kind of doing like um, uh, what they call spec scripts, where you kind of uh, you know, you, it's basically it's a script for a show that you would like to work on, but if you know, it's kind of like just to give people an idea of writing. So I, I'm I'm kind of almost done with my second Megas XLR episode, and I, and I and on the links at two S one P, you could find uh, my two spec scripts for um, the Big Bang Theory, uh, because unfortunately uh, the showrunner uh, he will not take scripts from outside people you know he uh, he he made it clearly known on the internet so but Chris Pranoski is a whole other animal. Like I said, had I been on that yeah. show, I would have spent the past hour, the whole hour, fucking begging him for a job. Um, <laughs> that's probably that's probably a good thing that why you were on. There. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I would have loved to have been on the episode, but shit. But you know, you finally ask, you ask a question, which is my question, and you didn't give me goddamn credit for God. So, <laughs> okay, go well, the, the, the question about about his wife that was your question, and yes, I will give you full credit about it. I did tell you thank you, by the way. I did text. You. Yeah, in private. I want that shit to. <laughs> I want Chris P to know that. Well, actually, I mean, uh, didn't you he, talk to Chris P? I thought I thought I, you talked to him. He, um, I mean, uh, he's responded to things I've said on Twitter. Um, I actually have an autographed Megas XLR DVD that he signed for me. But I, I mean, George George Christick got it signed. But, you but know. Didn't, didn't you get? Didn't you uh, interview I, him? I, I thought you inter- did. I haven't interviewed him yet. Oh, okay. Maybe he. Hey, maybe we can get him for this show. I don't know. You know what? I can. I can definitely. Oh, fine. You know what? To make up for somewhere it, down I'll the like line, him. somewhere down the line, we'll have Chris P on. This I, I will get you. I will get you his his assistant's email. Okay. How about that? <laughs> Does that make up for it? Does that okay. make up? All right. Just beg him for a job for now. <laughs> Oh, God, don't do that. That'll be the whole episode. <laughs> We're going. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Paul is not on that episode. Anyways, um... <laughs> But um, the other thing that I wanted to plug real quick because we're kind of <laughs> pushing this a little bit. Um, Geeky Inc. Uh, starting this Friday, which I don't know if it'll be out by Friday, but starting this Friday, um, we are doing pre-order for Nerdcore Absolution Volume 2. Um, basically, if you go to geekyincproductions.bandcamp.com, uh, you can go and pre-order it starting at midnight, which would be Thursday night, Friday morning. Um, pretty much all the songs will be there. There's going to be a couple that I will be adding last minute because um, obviously, you know, some of them are not up there right now. Mm-hmm. But um, 
basically I'm running a special, and you're hearing it here too. Uh, the first 20 people to pre-order Nerdcore Absolution will get Nerdcore Absolution Volume Two. Will get Nerdcore Absolution Volume One, or just Nerdcore Absolution uh, for free. So uh, if you like Nerdcore, I would suggest that you go pre-order it because you're going to get something for free on top of the three other free songs that you get for just pre-ordering off of Bandcamp. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of free things for you guys. Do you do you, do you get a picture? <laughs> So, um, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to plug. Okay, so uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening. Had as much fun time as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. Peace. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. Him punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I know. Oh, fucking... Are you sure I didn't write this? <laughs> Uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show, I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15, and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. $5 is yeah. insanely inexpensive. 15 is not even that bad for a hard, for paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come, I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I all. know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. and You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out twostrangersonepodcast.net. 
your one-stop resource for everything show-related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out.